Hey, people. Time for my daily tyranny and update until I get done with this codex. What will I do after this codex? I have no idea. But I can tell you this. This is my second pint. So correct me all you want because you know what? I do these videos fucking blasted. Ugh. Ripper swarms, baby. Ripper swarms. One of the unsung heroes of the Tyranid army list. I've always used Ripper swarms. Um, because I like them. Because they're bases. Because people underestimate them. And I kill models with them. Especially troops. And in this one, in the 6th edition, they actually got some love. Okay, I like them. You know, they still... I like them... Well, actually, Biomorphs got the love. And Biomorphs applied to the different models have improved all of them dramatically. But my favorite one about Ripper Swarms now is that in the past, you only could make them uh, uh, flying. Right? Um, basically, Sky Rats. Yes, I call them Sky Rats. Uh, but in this one... Their troop choices, their infantry. Yeah, they're still swarm bases, but they're infantry. And um, the Sky Rats are in fast attack, but the, the troop choice gets deep strike. And I have four of them in my army list. Four of them with deep strike because, well, you know, you for anybody who's watched my other videos... You know what I do with Deep Strike. On turn two, I just fucking drop my army on your head. <laughs> Which has so far been very entertaining. Um, but now they get Deep Strike. So now you get two options. You know, the Sky Rats are over there in fast attack with wings. Okay. Who are flying. And, and these guys now, they get Toxin Sacks. And Toxin Sacks gives them poison. They're still Toughness 3 attack. That still means you're you're um, wounding on a four plus, right? And and re-rolling wounds on anybody with a toughness three or below, which well toughness three. But you know who are you going to be attacking with freaking ripper swarms anyway, other than your standard troop unit? So okay, we I can live with that. But now with that four plus rule, I mean, these guys can sit there and assault space meanies, and and still. Have fun. I mean, it's four attacks. Four strength, three attacks, but there's still four attacks uh, at initiative two as well. But there's still four attacks. <clears throat> and and what else is then you give them – what else do they take? Oh, spine fists. Yes. So I'm shooting too. Uh, what is it? They, what are spine fists now? Twin linked? Number of attack at strength? I hope so. It's either twin link number of attack at strength or it's just number of attack at strength. But that's still four attacks. So they can pop out of a tunnel. Yes, I still say tunnel. But it doesn't even matter because they don't need to use the tunnel anymore because they deep strike. Uh, so I use them as kind of, you know, relief around the lictors sometimes. Because you have to remember, when everybody comes in... On turn two, in my grand scheme to rule the universe, uh, how do I say it? Timing, I think, is the is the word I'm looking for, is key. Okay, you don't. They don't just all happen simultaneously. You you place your future deployment units in order and also based upon the reactions of what's happening before it. So if something scatters, if, if – well, it doesn't scatter, but you know what I mean. If the mall walks, which usually go first, that's what I really mean uh, because it's still also a deep striking unit. So I typically hit with the Mawax first, and if that decimates a unit, and if it turns out, oh, there's only three models left, uh, and they're over there. Okay, well, guess what? Ripper Swarms are, are probably going to land next to them. Or... You understand what I mean. A little tactical thinking here. 
things that you can't describe in a video because it's going to be different for every game. So it's it's pointless. But the I give them the agrenal glands, I give them the spine fists, I give them the the deep striking. It makes them a little pricey by this point, but it's they're fun. They're, for me, they're fun because now they're they're fun. I think they're fun. They come in with their with their three wounds and four attacks. Um, they're fearless. That's also another thing which it, it comes in useful. Sometimes you need that unit that's fearless. And uh, usually it's only the other monstrous creatures that are fearless, and it's it's difficult to have them deep strike a lot of the time. But these guys, you know, maybe maybe you just need to tie up that demon until somebody else gets there, um, and and these guys can can handle that. Remember, you're tyrannid, okay? You don't care about dying. You care about winning. I mean, you're, everything in your army is expendable. There's no heroes. There's whatever. Um, so I have fun with them for that reason. They're extremely cheap until you add all the upgrades on it, like I do, especially the deep striking. But I, I, I take four of them for those spine fists. So that's four, eight, twelve. So, you know, that's 16 uh, twin-linked attacks. If I haven't gotten that wrong. And and it's fun. That's how I describe them. I'm sorry. I know I'm rambling on a bit. But they're actually a remarkably simple unit. Okay? They're freaking... Rippers. Okay? But they are excellent at tying things up. They have these huge bases. Which are great for covering fire. Especially if you have the outflanking gene stealers coming on the side and you need to place something down and you're like, okay, I'm going to put down this unit. Yeah, it's going to die, but it's a bunch of freaking ripper swarms and you have to fire through it to get that uh, five plus cover save because they're firing through the unit or do they ignore it and let the ripper swarms one in and now they have to worry about that poison especially if they're toughest three units and I get the extra reroll for the wound which let me tell you something that has been coming in exceedingly useful um, it's nice they still got that weapon skill too which bites but it's four attacks Think of them as a two-attack creature which re-rolls its losses then. And they're Ripper Brorms. Um, that's that's my pretty much my update on how I use them. I use them just as an expendable wall that I can bring in by death strike, uh, deep strike. Either to protect units, to shield units. You put them in places. It's very situational. But then as I've said through all of my videos throughout, the key of the Tyranids is adaptation on the fly. And for the amount of points that they cost, and no, I don't mention point costs. And there's a very good reason for that. Because I don't care. When I build an army, I think tactics. I don't think spreadsheet. Which apparently seems to be the thinking of a lot of players. Um, so if a tactic is good, then just about any army point list that you can think of, you'll have enough points to put in what you need to put in. I'm going to have a whole other video on this. Actually, it's already made, which I've talked about this. So spoilers, um, when you design your army list, don't think about points. That's the last thing on your list. Think about what is the strategy of my army? What is the role this unit plays in my army? What situation, if it comes up in the game, can I use it for? That's how I think about it. And then whatever points you have, you have to, to make that happen. And I've, I've never been in a situation where I said, wow, I just, I just don't have enough points to make this strategy work. It doesn't happen. When you start thinking about points, when I see people trying to squeeze in one extra unit, one extra upgrade, run extra figure, even model in a unit, 
just to get it in that I'm really asking, why are you doing that? What does that one more model really add to your strategy in the unit, or is it just another body on the table to get killed or not get killed or shoot? And, and maybe that's fine. Maybe that's the strategy. If the strategy is get off as many shots as you want, which actually I use the Ripper Swarms for, so I shouldn't, I shouldn't even complain about it. But like I said, I like to get as many deep striking things as I can. This is the really the only deep striking troop choice out there. Even though it's a non-scoring unit, and I like them, and um, try them out. It's a nice expendable unit. It's easier to get across the table than Gaunts, due to the fact that they can deep strike. And I'll talk to you next time. I'm getting real close to finishing my army overall strategies now. And I'm excited about it, despite the naysayers, because I beat them. So... I'm a happy gamer. See you next time. Mm -hmm.